Hey there, it's Natalie Topa. I'm in Dadaab um, near the refugee camp inside of our office compound, which is inside of the larger UN compound. Um, and I want to make this video specifically um, based on, um, you know, Jeff Lawton's um, model of the uh, chicken tractor on steroids system. So here we are in this perma garden that we designed a few weeks ago, three weeks ago, actually it was planted. Um, but here's our chicken system, which we are going to roll out into six different large food forest farms that will be bigger than this. And we've also, um, we're also going to make from a prototype that I've made a very, very small one for refugee shelters, where it won't be a system where we're turning piles of compost, but it will just be a deep bed mulch system with a trench, which is actually what we're retrofitting right now. So again, um, we've painted this white, the chicken coop, because it's very, very hot here. We've also planted passion vines to crawl and creep over and cover the system. Um, we've got 10 hens and two roosters in here. And basically all the food waste from the kitchen, um, as well as the compound sweepings. I just made a long video on this exactly same thing, giving a tour of the whole compound. But now I'm just making a small video only on the chicken compost. So all of the food waste and sweepings from the compound now come here. Before they were thrown away, they were burned, um, and you know not being treated as the resource that they are. And so what Sam is doing now, hi Sam. Uh, hi Simon. Hi. <laughs> um, uh, we're turning these piles, but we're actually gonna change the system a little bit. Um, so basically, the first part of the story is that inside the coop, which we have fitted with some natural branches um, because we want chickens to be nice and comfortable and perch on this, not on these square metal bars. Um, we've used jerry cans, the 20 liter jerry cans to make nesting boxes, which have worked perfectly. And this, this mama is showing you her eggs. Um, we've got the three chickens sitting now. Um, but what we do is here, add all of this mulch. We also add, let me just turn my camera. Um, we also add charcoal dust, manure, and after a week, this material comes into this, what we call the cage. And it's a bottomless cage um, and a topless cage. And every single, after, after we add that mulch, we add charcoal dust, manure, and then every single day for a week, all of this food waste comes in here. And all of this was being tossed out before. Um, and what I love that our chicken staff has, chicken staff, kitchen staff has done is that they have um, realized that if they let the chicken, the food waste sit out for a few days before they bring it in here, then it has a chance to develop all of the fly maggots, which then the chickens can eat. So they jump up here. They jump into the cage, they eat food, they eat maggots, they eat all kinds of stuff, they poop in there, and then after a week, then we turn that out into this pile. And this pile uh, is already quite a bit broken down, as you can see, and then after a week, it gets turned into this pile. And then after a week, it gets flipped into there. So the system is only one, two, three weeks old, which is why we only have three piles, uh, but we're now making our fourth. But actually, um, what I observed when I got here yesterday is that the compost is looking great and it's breaking down really well. And you can see tons of um, mycelium. It's really, really warm. There's lots of white fungal cover, um, but it is on the dry side and it's a bit too dry for my liking. So what we're actually going to do now is we're removing all of this compost in the making. Uh, we're gonna just set it outside for a little bit and we're gonna dig this whole thing into a deep one and a half foot trench. And we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do a deep bed instead of piles um, because we have so much evaporation here uh, from the heat and everything. So that is the plan. Um, and that will be more like what we're gonna be doing at the household level. It's, that's the system that I did have in my apartment uh, for people who are interested. There's a video on that if you just, uh, search balcony permaculture in YouTube and um, there's a video there that was done by Morag Gamble where she interviews me in my former apartment and there I do have like a nano poultry system 
Um, and that was what I had there was a deep bed system. So we are still gonna, you know, maneuver the piles with, um, you know, the sort of conveyor belt, but we're just gonna do it in one and a half foot deep hole uh, so that we reduce the moisture and also so that all the soil um, and compost has more access to the soil microorganisms organisms from the inside of that trench as well. So um, this whole site here is our, our laboratory. Um, we are gonna be promoting this model in our programming um, because we here are only giving food waste and insects from the compost. There's no outside chicken feed. And the feedback that we've had from, uh, from the team here is that the chickens actually look in a lot better body condition, a lot healthier than they did when they came, which is great because um, the access to chicken feed is one of the most prohibitive and cost prohibitive uh, things for people in this context to be growing food. They want to grow chickens, but they're, um, they're really discouraged by the cost of feed. And so everyone has mulch and compound sweepings that they're sweeping away from their homes every day. Often, usually they're burning it. Um, so you can see here as Simon and Sam are uncovering, uh, the chickens are, you know, eating lots of things that are being uncovered. Um, they're scratching. These are the, uh, what we call kukukenyegi, which are the local kind of roadrunner breed. They're very good scratchers. Um, and foragers. So what we do want to avoid are what are called the croiler or improved kinyeji, where I don't know what they do. They lobotomize the birds somehow and they don't scratch properly. You have to give them, uh, you have to give them chicken feed. They don't forage, they don't mate properly. And then the hens um, really don't know how to sit on the eggs. So the reproductive cycle, it's basically GMO chickens that can't just be natural birds and do all this. So you can't use those GMO chickens to do this. So. This is our system um, where for the six food forest farms, we're gonna have bigger ones of this. Um, and these are mongoose proof. We have two types of mongoose here. There's one really big mean one that loves chickens. The other one eats insects. We don't care about that one. Um, but that's why we have it in this enclosed cage. And on the farms, we may also have to do a similar protection. And at the household level, we'll have a, a significantly smaller unit that will be all one unit. So. Um, there you go. That's the recap. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sam and Simon. Yes. <laughs>